My reflection in the mirror started smiling at me, its grin widening unnaturally as I backed away in terror, realizing it wasn't mimicking my movements. The painting of a beautiful landscape in my living room changes subtly every day, adding a figure that grows closer to the foreground with each passing night, until it's standing right behind me. I found a series of photographs on my phone of me sleeping, each one taken from a different angle, but I live alone. I woke up to the sound of my own voice screaming in agony, only to realize it was coming from the dark figure standing at the foot of my bed, wearing my face like a mask. I received a text from my friend saying, I'm outside your house, let me in. But when I looked out the window, I saw her standing there, pale and lifeless, with hollow eyes. Every night, I heard my husband whispering in his sleep, until one night his voice answered from the closet, I'm right here. My daughter's imaginary friend always scared me, but I played along to humor her. Until the day I saw the swing in the backyard moving by itself, accompanied by two sets of footprints. As I drifted off to sleep, I felt a cold hand grab mine from under the bed. When I woke up, I found my hand covered in dirt, and the handprint on the floor was mine. The babysitter called to ask if she could cover the mirror in our bedroom because the children were scared. We don't own a mirror. I received a text from my friend saying, help, I think someone's in my house. Seconds later, I got another text saying, oops, wrong number, but it came from my friend's phone. After years of contacting and beaming signals to find intelligent life in the universe we finally got a response. Quiet. They will find you. The doctors assured me the surgery was successful and I could go home. But I can still feel their hands inside me, moving. My therapist told me to write down on a piece of paper all the name of the people that bother me most and burn them. I was never told what to do with the paper. Frustration brewed within me as mom focused solely on memories of my deceased brother, ignoring my presence and needs. As we approached my brother's grave, I noticed an eerie sense of being followed, but the true terror struck when I saw my own name carved onto the tombstone. I have memoized the layout of my house, especially the fact that there were 12 stairs in my home. I started to worry when I counted 13, 14, 15. The last man on earth sat alone in a room. There was a knock on the door. After struggling desperately to move any part of his paralytic body just to alert the doctors that he was conscious before they made the first incision, he was relieved to see that one of the nurses had noticed his pupils dilating from the bright light. She leaned in close and, in a terrifying whisper, said you think we don't know you're awake. In the silence of my room, I felt a cold hand wrap around my ankle, dragging me under the bed. As I struggled, I glimpsed a twisted grin in the shadows, whispering promises of endless suffering. I kept hearing an eerie giggle coming from my TV, regardless of what channel was playing. It never crossed my mind to check behind the TV. I woke up to the sound of scratching coming from under my bed, only to realize it was the sound of fingernails tapping against the wood, counting down to zero. I found a hidden room in my new house, filled with old dolls arranged in a circle, their glass eyes following me as I stepped inside. But when I tried to leave, the door slammed shut, trapping me with their silent, judging stares. I felt a presence watching me as I showered, but when I wiped away the condensation on the mirror, there was a message scrawled in steam. I can see you too. I found an old family photo album and noticed a picture of myself sleeping, dated for tomorrow. It was 11.59 p.m., and I heard my closet door creak open. My daughter's smiling face greeted me from my driveway as I returned home from a tough day. Where is the rest of her? She asked why I was breathing so heavily. I wasn't. As a biologist, I love all of my animals. But I sometimes wonder to myself if any of them still remember that they used to be human.
Us being twins, my brother and I often share experiences and sensations. I only wish he had warned me before getting open heart surgery. Yesterday I wrote the number 69 on my wrist as a joke. After waking up this morning, it's 68, and now it's not washing off. After years of research and hard work, we'd finally achieved our goal. We'd made it contagious. The world was thrilled with the announcement that the first Mars mission would be an all-female crew. One year later, the world was terrified when they all returned home pregnant. My four-year-old said he wished that people didn't have to knock. I told him about doorbells, and he asked me to install one on his window. The spiders worked quickly to envelop their prey tightly in silk. The man's muffled screams grew fainter with each new layer. I came home after my week-long trip away and took a shower. I pressed the only towel in the room against my face and discovered it was already wet. I begin tucking him into bed and he tells me, Daddy, check for monsters under my bed. I look underneath for his amusement and see him, another him, under the bed, staring back at me quivering and whispering, Daddy, there's somebody on my bed. I was on my way to school one morning, when something in the forest caught my eye. No matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get it back. We smiled proudly as our daughter went on her bus for her first day of school. Our hearts dropped when the real bus arrived two minutes later. A pandemic has wiped out over 99% of humanity, but don't worry. It only spreads to those who know about it. As I watched the sun set from my villa in Paris, I received terrifying news from across the globe. The sun had set in New Zealand, too. After I asked the crystal ball to tell me how to escape death, I was very confused as it read, No thanks honey, I'm full. However, something clicked in my head when my wife offered me cake after dinner. Yesterday, I figured out how my curse worked. Apparently, only people in danger can see what I write. I think I might be the most successful serial killer in history. The best part is telling their loved ones we did everything we could. Spend 24 hours locked in the old insane asylum and win a million dollars. It's been 26 hours, so why is the door still locked? My brother and I sit down with the Ouija board, and we both place our hands on the planchette. He says, Mike, are you here with me? And I move the planchette to yes. I never go to sleep. But I keep waking up. Two eyes peered at me through the bellowing darkness, then disappeared again. No survivors down here, I heard the rescue searcher say. Scientists celebrated the first successful cryogenic freezing. He had no way of letting them know he hadn't lost consciousness. The funeral attendees never came out of the catacombs. Something locked the crypt door from the inside. They delivered the mannequins in bubble wrap. From the main room I begin to hear popping. I was having a pleasant dream when what sounded like hammering woke me. After that, I could barely hear the muffled sound of dirt covering the coffin over my own screams. Nurse's note, born 7 pounds 10 ounces, 18 inches long, 32 fully formed teeth. Silent, always smiling. The longer I wore it the more it grew on me. She had such pretty skin. Today I found a dead body in my trunk. It's strange because I swear I put in two yesterday. I can't sleep she whispered, crawling into bed with me. I woke up cold, clutching the dress she was buried in. The pairs of emaciated eyes outnumber the single round in my gun. With pleading tears falling on her doll's hair, I point the barrel at my last surviving daughter. I peeked outside. The pizza delivery guy is at the door. 
but I didn't order a pizza and definitely not from someone wearing a pig mask.